Now, I want to talk to you about swing plane. One of the most important things that, that you can do to improve your game. And one of the things that's taking place on the PGA Tour, you, you see nowadays individuals with swings that are very sort of uh, similar. You go back into the 70s and, and even in the, the 80s, a lot of different golf swings. You saw swings that that were low with the arm, high with the arm, across the line at the top, stand the shaft up, a lot of wrist set, not a lot of wrist set, really long swing across the line and down like a daily, a lot of other people going really short, varied all over the place. Now what you see is you see players taking the club back and at the top of their swing, you don't really see a lot of swings going past parallel. But what you also see is you see the head of the golf club farther away from the strike line than the handle. The swing plane now has become a very, very important part of consistency in golf. And it's one of the things that I, I work on in my swing and I try to get my students to work on in their swing. My favorite drill, and the reason why I love this drill so much is it's very, very simple to, to do. We all have a hanger sitting in the, in the house. If you haven't had a chance to see this video, just go over and, and check it out. Uh, it's got a ton of views on it right now and it's going up. Um, it tells you how to use this. But basically what you're going to do is you you put this on the, the lead side of the grip with the hook part up into the air. Make sure you've got enough space so that you can get both of your hands on comfortably. And then at address, go face on here for me, Gibbs. At address, you're going to get a little touch point there on the wrist but between that uh, hanger and the, and the lead wrist. And then what you're going to do, not fast, not hard, is you're going to make the club go back. And what I want you to feel is I want you to feel that connection on the wrist, and I want it to go all the way to the handle, or, or to the hook, rather. So you're going to go back like this and make it stay on that, that uh, forearm there. That hook is going to touch the forearm. And what you're going to feel is you're going to feel a couple different things. You're going to feel your wrist change. The wrist position is going to change. You're going to get away from that cup which if you touch the other forearm with the hook, that's when you're getting the cup in the wrist. This is going to be a nice flat wrist. And the second thing that you're going to feel is you're going to feel the head of the golf club farther away from the strike line than the handle. So the club will now want to fall this way instead of falling this way. I don't want to see the hook in between the forearms. I want it to stay attached to that lead forearm and particularly down and through the strike, which is a separate issue. But anyway, so you go up like this. Set that. We're not swinging fast. We're not swinging hard. We are going to swing full. Feel that connection right there. That club gets laid off or on plane, and then you come down. You'll be able to hit it solidly. I don't want you to grip it tight depending upon the thickness of that hammer, and I like to use the blue one here just because it sticks out, but that's a little bit of a thicker hanger than I might recommend, but it's still great. You just I don't want you to swing hard. And then what you're going to do is after you've done that for a while, and you have this feel of the arms and the hands particularly sort of being flatter. And the hands are, and this is one of the ways that I like to say this to people, the left hand for the right-handed golfer, the left hand is to the left of the right hand. When you go across the line, the right hand gets to the left of the left hand. So if I go across the line, I take this club inside and I go over here like this, and now what you see is my right hand is on the left side of the left hand. I never want that. I want the left hand to always be on the left of the right hand. Say that 10 times fast. So you come up here like this, feel that position right there, left hand to the left of the right hand, and now you got it planed. And now all of a sudden the strike is coming out of the center of the face, and this is going to help you with that. Now, wonderful drill with that hanger. What do you do? If for some reason that doesn't work and it, and believe me, all these drills that I give you are going to work for somebody and they're going to not work for others. So how do we, how do we solve the problem of, Hey, what do I do if that doesn't work for me? Well, one of my other favorite ones is this basketball. And what I like to do with the basketball is this, you hold it by what I call the ears. So when I look at the basketball, I got a nose, I got the eyes up here, mouth, and then I got the ears on either side of the golf ball. So I hold it, uh, of the basketball. So I hold it by the ears, and when I take this club back, or this basketball back, I'm going to rotate 
the left ear on top of the right ear. So my left hand, my glove hand, is going to be on top of my trail hand. So I go like this. And that's where I get some forearm rotation. And now I've rotated it. Now I go up here, and, and what you're going to feel when you do this also, too, by the way, is you're going to get some really good width. Now, coincidentally, this is what Tiger Woods, who you're going to get a chance to see this week, this is what Tiger Woods does in his golf swing. So let me show you, or what I what I, I should say, what he used to do in his golf swing. This video that I'm going to show you is from back at the start of 2000, 2001. And what I love about this motion is the forearm rotation. So what you're going to see is you're going to see the club push back. You see the head of the golf club right here. It's going to be, it's going to get outside of that yellow line. Now you might say, well, he's taking that outside. No, he's actually starting to rotate the forearms right here. So there's massive forearm rotation, tremendous width. And now the club goes up there on the plane and then sets right down the line. And you can see how flat that wrist is. Now he's hitting a little draw. Club face is slightly closed to that forearm line, that wrist line. But now what he's done in the backswing is he's got forearm rotation. Just let your eyes focus on what's going on in that area there with his hands and his forearms. And what you're going to see is major rotation. He's not really doing anything with his wrists as much as he's just letting the forearms rotate up to the top and just a beautiful, beautiful position. That's what he's doing. Now, that's what this basketball drill is going to do for you. So again, get it by the ears, go up like this, rotate it over there. And what I like to do when I hold this is I like to take this middle line, set it perpendicular to the ground right there so that when I go back, I try to feel like that line now is on an angle here. See that right there? So now I can watch it and I set it on that. I get that feeling of my right forearm rotating this way. And now what I'm gonna do when I go back here is I'm gonna feel that same thing. And you can see when I do that, how far back that club head is. And you also have really good width when that takes place. Then take that back as far as I could have. But the point is, is that that club is on the proper plane. Let me record that for you so you get an idea of what this is going to look like. So get out of the tiger swing. Put a little recording on this. Do that same thing. And I know this is going to help you out. It's a drill that I give to a lot of my students. It's a drill that I've used as well. Feeling that forearm rotation by the use of that basketball. So here, again, a little bit shorter. But now, what I want you to see is, when I take this thing back, look at how... When I draw a line from the head of the golf club all the way down the arm, that it's a straight line right there. That kind of looks, believe it or not, a little like Steve Stricker right now. One of the things that, that Steve Stricker did with his game, and we obviously know the success that he's had um, both on the PGA Tour and also, too, now the, the amazing year that he had on the PGA Tour champions, in large part because he's got this club on the on the plane. Now, I know he's a wonderful putter. I get it. Okay, it's not like I'm oblivious to that, but the ball striking has gotten a lot better. And I remember him watch. I remember watching him at a PGA Championship out west at, at Sahali, and he was way across the line. His his club was pointing uh, for a right-handed golfer to like one thirty, two o'clock. I mean, way across the line. Well, this is this is another uh, drill that's going to help you get control over that um, over that swing plane. So something that I love to to have my students do and something that, that will help you a tremendous amount. Let me give you a couple others. Got one 
This is a simple one. This is a split drill, okay? Split hand drill. Now, this is almost like a hockey shot. And what I like to do is I like to start with my, my hand totally on the, on the uh, shaft there, not touching the grip. You're going to be bent over quite a bit. This is something that you could actually do on a tee as well, right? So if I'm, if I'm to get a tee, I don't have to bend down quite as far. So I pop that onto a tee. You are not going to swing the club full here. You're not going to swing the club fast. You're just going to get a feeling of at the top, your, your trail hand being to the back side of the lead hand, right? So for the right-handed golfer, the left hand's to the left of the right hand, as I was talking about for uh, a while ago. So we get set up like this and take the club back to here, and we feel that position right there. So then I go and I hit. And then you keep hitting and you keep hitting. And slowly what you end up doing is you end up getting rid of the T and you end up bringing the hand, the trail hand, onto the grip. So now I've got half the grip into the palm of the hand. You can see right there that I got in, in my right hand, I've got half of the shaft and half of the grip. That's right in the, the palm. And then I'm doing the same thing here and then there. And then what you slowly do from there is you bring this up onto the, the grip and the same thing. You're getting a real feel of that trail hand being to the backside of the lead hand. And then eventually what you do is you unite the hands together just like you would do in a normal swing up there get that feel right there so really feel that okay and now go and that's how you make a, a nice solid strike okay so those are things that you can do and that split hand uh, grip drill is wonderful if you didn't bring a basketball with you or you don't have your coat hanger now how do we improve when we're kind of inside right because the weather gets pretty bad. The days get short. Maybe the only time that you can practice is at, at night in your house. How do I do that? Okay. What you got to do is you got to go to a room that you don't care what your wall looks like. Or what you can do is you could take some cardboard. And what I've done is I've built this thing. But what you can do is you can take some cardboard and put it on the wall. Okay. Now, what... I like to do, and this is an incredible feel because you can actually feel, and I do as well, where the club is. Because now what we're doing is we're taking the feel away from the hands necessarily, and we're putting it into the head of the golf club. So when you take the club back, let's go down the line there, Gizzy. We take the club back, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this club on this cardboard box here, and I'm going to just kind of grind this along there and I'm not going to let that come off what happens to you when you come off the line or cross the line is you let the club come off that and you start setting the club horizontally okay so you're setting it this way instead of setting it vertically so what we do is we get here club gets on that wall or cardboard and now I'm pushing back so I feel that push, okay? So I do that for a little while. Now, this is one of the advantages I have in the studio. Um, you might not have that, but inside here, the Morgan Franklin Transformation Center, I've got everything. I've got all at my disposal. And so what I can do is I can do that drill, feel this. Now, I move away from that. But I feel like that thing's back there. So I'm reaching for that. Even though I know I can't get it, I'm reaching for that. So I go here, reach, and then go. Now, this is always fun to be able to do this and then record it. So now I'm going to record this. So I'm going to get in here like this. And I'm going to go here, feel that pushing away. Now, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to feel that push away. And then I'm going to do that. And then hit. Now, move this. Go over here. 
and check this out. So that drill, you can see how effective that drill is because that shaft of that golf club is really on plane. There's no way that's coming off. Now, reach for it, and you can see how much better when I reach for it. Look at the line that I can draw right down the shaft, right through the, the butt end of the club, right to the lead shoulder. So doing exactly what I want to have happen. That's one of the things that's great about a really good drill. When you do it, it does what you're trying to have happen. I want to get the, the head of the golf club away from the strike line. I want it to be in a straight line with my forearm, my, my lead arm, and the shaft. That's exactly what I've got there. So this drill works. Now, what does it look like when I step into the golf ball? Take the club back, get up here like this, and now I go down through the butt end of the club. That's really good. It's a slightly different plane, but it's really good. That's exactly what I want to have happen. I'm not swinging fast. I'm not swinging hard. And now the club starts to come down. Tracks down right through the forearm right there, which is exactly what I want. Comes into the strike. Let's see if we get a, that's a little bit towards the toe. Now, cut that up and show you what that swing looks like. Not fast, but close to what I'm trying to have happen. So now, come back over here. And what I do is I just keep rehearsing that right there. And what I feel it's going on is when I'm getting to the top of my swing, instead of my arms going towards the target, they're actually going back towards that wall. That's what I feel like because I've, I've had so long of crossing the line. You may get that same feeling too. So back, keep reaching. And that's a good clean strike again. Now let's see without any of the aids, how I do. And this is one of the advantages for me is, is that I can continue to work on this, continue to practice, and I can videotape, which I'm a big believer in. So let's see how I did. Club goes back up beautiful i mean if my golf club got there every single time i'd be thrilled i really would i'd be thrilled and when you get your golf club there every time you're going to be thrilled okay so let me just go over these again for you here four different drills for you okay one Coat hanger, set that coat hanger like this. I typically will put the, the end of the coat hanger right at the end of the grip there, okay? So, just like that. Now it's touching up against the forearm. The hook is always forward. Take the club back, and I want that hook to touch on that forearm. What it also, what this will also do is this will help you set the club as well. So we go up here, we're not swinging fast on this. That's my favorite. If you want to see that that drill, just jump over there. There's a, a, a video that we've got for that that will help you out tremendously. This one here, basketball, line perpendicular to the ground, hands on the ears. Now we take this back, feel the forearm rotation, see that line on an angle, just like that. I feel like my left hand is on top of my right. So my lead hand is on top of the trail hand. That's that forearm rotation that I'm looking for. Set that thing down. Feel that same thing now right here. Feel that wonderful forearm rotation. Very good strike again. Lots of different ways to get this club on plane. Sometimes with the wrist, sometimes with feeling the club head, sometimes with feeling the forearms. That's what these drills are all about. The third one that I love is the split hand drill. This is one that you don't necessarily need any of these apparatus or instructional devices 
uh, and it's hard to call a basketball an instructional device as we all know that we use that for something else. But you start out this drill, your trail hand is completely on the shaft. And then you're going to make a swing, you go back to the top, and you feel the trail hand to the back side of the lead hand. So my left hand is to the left of the right hand. If you're left-handed, the left hand is to the left of the right hand. So either way, both are going to work. Feel that? It's going to require a little bend over. So you take this back. You feel that position right there. Come down and strike it. Then you slowly, and this is over time, right? So you hit some with the hand fully on the shaft. Then you go to where it's mid, uh, mid hand. So you've got part shaft and part grip. And then you get fully on the grip. And then you go back to your, your complete grip. Feel that trail hand underneath the lead hand. So up here like this. That was actually really good. I could really feel that one. I got to do that again. That felt so good. So back here like this. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what you want to feel. And up, over top, boom. Okay. Again, all these things that you're doing, when you first start doing them, I don't want full speeds. You want to stay away from the full speed. And then this final one, which is the one that I really like a lot. Not a difficult contraption to build. It's just difficult to find it. But what I like to do is get cardboard. You get cardboard all the time this time of year. You get that cardboard. Just cut it up. You can put it on a wall. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take the golf club, the head of the club, put it on that wall and let it just grind along the wall. Now, one of the things that I want to mention to you, and this is important, okay? If you're an upright swinger of the club, so if I get closer to that, the plane will be different but I still am pushing up there. It'll still be on plane. It'll just be a slightly different plane. If I get to where I'm really far away from it, now what I'm going to get is a flatter plane. And as I get closer to it, I'm going to get a more upright plane. But either way, I'm still going to feel this grinding and still feeling like this is pushing back that way. So when I, when I do this, I feel like my thumbs are kind of moving back in the backswing, but they're continuing to point to the uh, pull side of the target. So to my left, then what you do, get that out of the way and rehearse that. So when that goes up, that's still going over there. And what you can see is if you look at the head of the golf club relative to the simulator screen, I'm pushing back, but it's still staying outside the screen. I'm not going into the screen there. I'm staying outside the screen. So I get that feel, push back that way. It'll change. It'll get into the screen. You want it to, but you just want to feel it. So up like this and then push back. So that's what we get. That was really, really, really good. Okay. So you got four different things to help you get control over that swing plane. So all of a sudden now what you do is you start getting much more center face strikes. You get a much more consistent low point in your golf swing and you start to be able to deliver consistent loft. And that's going to help you with your iron play. It's going to help you control. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm launching the golf ball somewhere between 17 and 19 degrees. That one there was at 17.9. So 18 degrees, that's dead in the middle between 17 and 19. That's what I get out of my six iron when I deliver the loft consistently. If you're delivering an inconsistent loft, you're going to get inconsistent spins. You're going to get unpredictable uh, apexes, you're going to get unpredictable descent angles. So that ball can roll out quite a bit. You'll get, you'll get destroyed when you play in the wind. I mean, destroyed because you don't know exactly what's going on. So that's why the swing plane thing is going to help you. And that's why you have these different things. Find the one that works best for you. Spend some time working on it. Take it out to the golf course or to the range, hit some balls and get a feel of what this is all about. And after you get that, then you go, okay, you know what? This is my favorite drill. And you might find, like I do, that that coat hanger is your favorite drill. Do it a lot. It should be difficult. This is the other thing that you need to remember. These drills that I give you, they should be difficult. If they're easy for you, then you don't need to work on them. When they're difficult, that lets you know, okay, I can't do this. I need to do this, so I got to keep sticking with this, right? It's one of the things that I sent out on Twitter today about if you want to be great, you really want to be great. You want to be successful. You have to be uncommon. It's so simple. You have to be uncommon. 
And what that means is, is that you have to do things that others can't do. And sticking to what our word of the day today is quitless, you got to make sure you don't quit. You got to keep after this and keep doing it. And you can't take time off. So I'll do this stuff. I'm working on this swing plane all the time. This has been like, Greg has seen me make golf swing after golf swing over the months that, that we've been working on this. And it's the same thing. I keep recording it. I keep going, hey, Greg, what do you think? And he goes, that's ah, much better. Ah, oh, that one stinks. Okay. And then I keep going. I keep going. You got to keep doing this. You want to be great. You got to be uncommon. One of the things that you got to do to be uncommon is you got to have, you got to be relentless. You got to pursue something and you got to be relentless. You got to be quitless. Okay. Okay. <laughs>